A few weeks ago, we published a video of Junko Furuta, a terrible case where a young woman was tortured in the most cruel and inhuman way possible. Many of you ask us for a second part, so if you haven't seen the first part yet, we leave you the link so you can watch it. Junko's story shocks everyone who knows it. In addition to the abuse she suffered, not only from her four kidnappers, but from more than a hundred men, the young woman who was brutally attacked. In the previous video, we mentioned some torture to which she was subjected, such as forcing her to drink urine, feeding her cockroaches, inserting firecrackers into her rectum, burning her with cigarettes and lighters, or amputating her breasts with pliers. But Junko suffered many more. They drove an iron bar into her private area, forced her to sing and dance while being beaten, pierced her breast with sewing needles and tied her up and threw very heavy dumbbells at her stomach. They also hung her from the ceiling and used her as a punching bag, and even beat her head against the ground and urinated on her. It was said that Junko begged her captors on several occasions to kill her and finish her off, but of course they refused. They wanted to make her suffer and enjoy her pain. It continued her torture, such as forcing her to sleep on the balcony in the middle of winter with freezing temperatures, or locking her up in a freezer for several hours. After her multiple abuses, she lost bladder control and couldn't hold her urine, and was also severely beaten for soiling the carpets. Over time, even drinking and eating food made her vomit, and that also turned into more beatings. The young woman got to the point of having to crawl on the floor down the stairs to get to the bathroom. She couldn't even walk anymore, and on many occasions, she fell unconscious from the pain. But her kidnappers didn't even allow her that, and they plunged her head into cauldrons of cold water to continue their torture, and that she was aware of each one of them. After forensic analysis, they found traces of DNA on Junkun's body from other abuses, including Koichi Ihara. Ihara was said to have been threatened and intimidated by the kidnappers into abusing the young woman, and that when he got home, he told his brother what had happened. The brother later told the story to his parents, and they contacted the police. The police came to the house where Junko was kidnapped, and the kidnappers told them that there was no girl inside. They even offered to look inside. The authorities, seeing that the young people offered themselves for a search, believed that it was sufficient proof that there was no one there. If they had entered at that time, they would have discovered the young woman. Her terrible kidnapping would have lasted 16 days and perhaps she could have recovered from her injuries. These two police officers were fired for their recklessness. Despite the brutality of the crimes, the identity of the torturers was concealed by the court because they were all minors at the time of the crime. However, the Shukan Punshin magazine revealed the names of the four, stating that they didn't deserve to have the right of anonymity. The court sentenced Miyano, the alleged leader of the crime, to 20 years in prison. He was 18 years old at the time of the murder. The boy's mother reportedly sent Junko's parents 50 million yen after selling their family home. In 2013, Hiroshi was arrested again for fraud, but because there was insufficient evidence, he was released without charge the following month. Minato received a sentence of five to nine years. He was 16 at the time of the crime. In 2018, he was arrested again for attempted murder after beating a man with a metal rod and cutting his throat with a knife. Watanabe received a sentence of five to seven years. He was 17 at the time. Inogura spent eight years in a juvenile prison before being released in 1999. It is said that Ogura, after his release, bragged about being one of Junko's attackers. He was arrested again for assaulting another man and was sentenced to seven more years in prison. People considered the sentences too light because young people were protected by special laws for children under 18 years of age. It makes us shudder just to imagine the torment that the young woman experienced. A terrible case that shocked everyone. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode!